Hello, everybody. This is the Seeds of Liberty podcast, episode four. Uh, you could find us on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, uh, and also our RSS feed. All of that can be found on theseedsofliberty.com. So today we're going to discuss um, mandatory voting and um, the belief in authority. So, so, so yeah. So we'll start off with mandatory voting. Obama's recent um, um, mention of mandatory voting is not really like a, as a bill passed in the law yet. Um, so far, it's just mentioned by the dictator himself. So, hopefully, it'll stay that way, right? <laughs> one can easy only, with the trigger words. Bro. One can only hope. <laughs> so uh, yeah. So I, I mean, I, I I first heard about this last week, and um, and it kind of uh, kind of shocked me. You know, I. Uh, because you know, there's there's a couple of countries um, that that require voting. Uh, Australia nope. and I believe North Korea. Although North Korea only has one person on the ballot, so so voting would be, would be kind of redundant, right? <laughs> oh yeah, they have real consent of the yeah. government over there for sure. Yes. Like one hundred percent consent. One hundred percent. So Australia is interesting. Yeah, they they have like fifty dollar uh, penalty if you don't vote. Uh, it's kind of interesting and. Um, you know, it's like my next question would be, well, what if you refuse to pay? <laughs> you know, you know, how far are they willing to take it? Right. You need to push this button. And if you don't, <laughs> you know, we're going to push it with your dead hand. Like, what the <laughs> you know, so it gets kind of uh, uh, yeah, ridiculous. That does sound kind of silly. It gets kind of ridiculous after a while. And, and, and the idea behind mandatory voting is like it's like if people choose not to vote voluntarily like for whatever reason you know they they're ignorant or they just don't want to participate in you know the uh, advanced election of stolen goods <laughs> then w w that's your freedom of speech um you know that's your right right to that's actually what we were talking about last time freedom of dissociation or association this is the freedom to dissociate right not participate in and the in the electoral process, right? If we so choose, so so um, <laughs> so not voting is, I think, completely within that uh, framework of of, uh, of a right, right? Uh, what do you think, uh, Jeremy? Uh, I, I agree. Um, the The first thing that I thought of when I, I heard that story was what what you were mentioning about you know, well, what are they going to do if you don't, you know, if you don't pay the fine? Like that, my first thought was, well, this is just another opportunity for them to penalize people for not taking an action. Um, just like with the, uh, you know, the ACA, how you get punished if you don't use the service, um, which totally goes against every principle of freedom, <laughs> even the pretend freedom that we're supposed to have in this country. Um, so uh, yeah, that that was that was the first thing that popped into my mind, and 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 honestly, I didn't really research too much further into that because, uh, as you said, it's 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 a as you were saying, Dave, it's a very silly notion <laughs> uh, to uh, force people to to vote. You know, uh, I think they're taking that vote harder uh, attitude a little too far. Um, <laughs> You know, well, I, I, what, what's the rationale? I mean, what I mean, what what, what were they saying? You know, what what are, what are they trying to say to everybody that, um, you know, because they they're not going to spin it that you have to do this because because we you know we need to control you even more. So they, what what was the spin? I didn't even pay attention to that that side. <laughs> um, was it just to get the the people that aren't participating? Uh, excited to do it again? Like, if, if people well, are choosing like you have not to, look to at vote. how many people voted last year for the general election. It was, what was it, 98 million voters out of a country of 333 million? Mm -hmm. So. Well, uh, yeah, I think I remember it was like 60% of the total. Of the of the total voting population or something like that. No, less, no, no, it was less, less, no, no, it was 40%? way less. No, no, it was like one third. Thirty? Yeah, well, no, like thirty, right? Yeah, 30 three, three, so 330, 330 million people are ineligible to vote, Dave. <laughs> I know they're that's not a, eligible to vote. So, so I'm saying it's not. It wasn't. A, it was a. I'm talking about the percentage of of what of the of the actual voters. No, no, no. Um, you can't take that in consideration because voting is not a nice act. Like if you can't vote and people can still vote and that vote affects you, it's kind of bullshit, don't you think that? Someone else can be determining something for you that you have no say in. Well, of course, I'm not disagreeing with that. I I was just saying the percentage you were talking. Well, they're about trying to get that off. up. They're trying to get that up because it's that whole consent of the governed thing. No, no, the way I look at it is, um, you know, most of the people that don't vote, I think, are like illegals. <laughs> you know, people who you know work off the books, right? 
Um, and and so if you can get those people, you know, I guess citizen status, you know, by voting or, or I don't know, just force them to vote even though they're not a citizen, then who do you think they're going to vote for? They're going to vote for the, the, the guy who gives them, you know, free subsidized housing, amnesty, you know, um, <laughs> welfare, you know, you, you're going to, which is mostly Democrat, right? <laughs> You, they're gonna, for sure they're going to support the um the welfare uh you know lactation d milk ducks you know <laughs> no it's it's all right so my thoughts on this whole situation are is like i guess they're just trying to eliminate that idea that if you don't vote then you can complain <laughs> like mm. you know the old adage that you know i guess people in the in the political paradigm will say you know if you don't vote, then you can't complain, which is – the truth is it's the exact opposite because if you do vote, you can't complain because you consented to that system by voting. So whatever the outcome is, you have to be accepting of it because you wanted that system to work for you. It may not have, but it's like I guess jumping from a house into a pool. If you land in it, the pool, oh yeah, it looked cool, but if you – cut a little short and break your legs <laughs> you're, you're gonna you're gonna say wow that was a stupid idea <laughs> but you still jump from a freaking roof yeah so uh, it the whole forced mandatory voting like i would love to see how many people just said you know what no fuck i'm not i'm not voting come arrest me i'm gonna bog this whole system down if 100 million people did that mm -hmm. or not even 100 if 10 million people did that they're not. They're they're gonna go bankrupt trying to prosecute everybody. Mm -hmm. well, or they'll steal so much property that people will go freaking crazy because what they'll do is they'll say, "Oh, you owe us fifty dollars for not voting," but okay, now you owe us a thousand dollars for late payment of that fifty dollars. <laughs> oh, you don't pay us. We're coming to collect your property. We're putting a lien on your house. We're doing all this, and then you're gonna have people getting evicted from their house. To fail, fail to pay because they didn't vote. Even if there's, uh, even if there's a John Doe, Jane Doe, and a I don't want to vote for anybody button, it's immoral to force people to vote. So that's that's my thoughts on it. What were you gonna say, Jeremy? Oh, I, I agree with what you were saying, Dave. Um, it's just a, a matter of the, you know, obviously forcing people to do anything is, is against what I know the three of us stand for. Except um, for having a good time. <laughs> <laughs> still, still don't want to force anybody to do that. Actually, you know, that um, reminds me of a meme that uh, somebody posted on Facebook, you know, uh, can men get raped by women? We're like, not, can you, we'll, can you force we'll somebody touch on to, that. you know, that's a good, <laughs> we'll touch on that in a few episodes. Cause I feel like that could be a whole topic. <laughs> Cause he, he just talks about having fun. Can you force someone to have fun? <laughs> no, because like, let's say some fat chick ties you up. No, nothing against fat chicks, but like, and she's got gonorrhea and AIDS and stuff and she rapes you and gives you AIDS. Like she ties you to a bedpost while you're blacked out drunk and you wake up and she's riding you. You're a guy. You must have like it. To, I'm, I'm trying to not get PG MA or whatever. <laughs> I'm trying to keep it PG 13. I'm allowed <laughs> one F word an episode. And I'm saving it. You know? But, uh, you know, that's just the whole mandatory voting thing is just so ludicrous. Like anybody that thinks that's a good idea, I'm pretty sure no one on any side of the status paradigm. Left, right, middle, whatever you want to call it. I'm pretty sure everyone saw that and goes, ooh, that's a bad idea. <laughs> like, I don't think I, I've heard anyone say that that was a positive idea. I think you underestimate the uh, ignorance of, of some of the status factions. <laughs> some of the people, I, I did see a couple of uh, people, um, you know, although it was through social media. So for all I know, they could have been bots. Who knows? Um, but this usually when that's there, the sentiments, the, I'm sure the sentiment is there for the hardcore people that really believe that voting is, is you know, there are people out there that still believe in the civic duty and, and, and you and get mad at you if you don't vote. Well, uh, I mean, we you're are the government. You know, well, of course, um, what I was going to say before, before we took the detour into uh, the, the rape discussion um, <laughs> was that, you know, what, what you were saying, Dave, about the, you know, the possible escalation in um, p penalties. 
And if there was only a, you know, a certain number of people just stood up and, and said that, um, unfortunately, I, I don't think there's enough people out there that be willing to take it that far and, and deal with all that stuff. Um, but even that number that you, th just the number that you threw out there, the 10 million number, if, if we had 10 million people ready to stand up and just say no and just stop like paying their taxes or doing anything, you know, even if it's not, it, beyond just a mandatory voting, um, we, the, the, a lot of havoc could be caused. I don't even think we're at that, we're at that, at that level yet, unfortunately. Um, I don't, I don't it, think havoc's the right word to use. For the I system, I, I think a lot of good things could happen. <laughs> well, no, for, I'm talking for the system. There would be. Oh yeah, I mean, for looking through be. the eyes of the dictator, sure. So, but that was that. That was my thinking on what you were saying because you know the escalation. It's it's tough. All those things you mentioned, like it, it would take a lot for people to stay on their ground. Would they? Would they? I'll tell them would, if they want to come pick me up, <laughs> take me out for dinner, <laughs> and then drive me to the polling place. Then I will vote. And by voting, I mean I will write "fuck you assholes." That was my f word on the on the, uh, on the uh, ballot, and then I will hand it in. Yep, that's acceptable. I think <laughs> that's plain and simple. It like if they want to give me like all that, sure, go ahead. And I'm picking where we eat too. It ain't gonna be McDonald's. Promise you that. No, I, I definitely had a few family members that uh, thought it was a great idea. Um, of course. It's, exactly. it's funny. Whenever, exactly. it's, you know, it's funny. Whenever um, whenever um, proposed laws or legislations uh, are, uh, you know, being considered and thought out, you know, if I, if I bring up, you know, that a law is force, right? <laughs> it's a gun to everyone's head. Nobody likes to think about that. You know, nobody wants to think about the force involved. Everybody wants to think, you know, this is great. You know, they want to do this right here. They want to go. You know, it's yeah, it's like it's like you know, the ostrich put the head in the sand. You know, and just like the law is good, whatever they say, I I I understand what they're doing. They're trying to help us. You know, we're you know a bunch of kids. We need some rules. <laughs> so do you guys, you anything else to add to that, to that to voting? Uh, no, it's it's a bad idea. We I think we all agree. <laughs> I, I I don't I don't really see it happening though. Um, I mean, what you were just starting to say, Danilo, about how how a, how a law when it starts getting formed. Yeah. Um, this is actually usually the opening steps. Is you know some either the president or one of the higher ranking members of one of the two parties will throw an idea out there, mm -hmm. and it's really just when they say stuff like this, it's really just to to see what sticks mm -hmm. and see how many people clamor for it and go, oh, that's a great idea, we should do that. And then if you if they gain enough interest, then legislation will start getting. Well, actually, I shouldn't say that. They probably already have started crafting legislation just in case. <laughs> I mean, for goodness sakes, with the with the last round after Sandy Hook, with the whole gun, you know, with the whole gun thing, I, I think there was talk about uh, the bill that what's her name Feinstein pulled out was uh, has been sitting in her desk for like 10 years uh, <laughs> so they come prepared hmm. um, if there's anybody that, in the world that I could just wish to see slip on a banana pill and <laughs> I'm not saying break their neck and die but I'm also not saying that <clears throat> um, I'm not saying I don't like her but <laughs> she would be it I don't know when that dusty old bag's not gonna die <laughs> Like, how old is that bitch? She's been in Congress longer than I've been alive. Longer than any one of you have been alive. Yeah. Yeah. There's a few. There's a few of them, but that's the... Uh... But no, here's, here's my thought. I don't want to get... I want to close your eyes real quick and think about this, okay? <laughs> Obama, before he leaves office, he gets that mandatory voting going. But to enforce that mandatory voting, he has to start up a voting corps, which is a welfare subsidy. <laughs> then he has to set up you know, planned voting places. So that's a subsidy. That's another boondoggle. <laughs> and then the blah, 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 you keep going and you're just like, holy shit, we've already created another boondoggle with a lot of other people on the government dole. We're creating more jobs. We're just... Yeah, <laughs> we're just... We're, you know Shovel what? ready, baby. Shovel ready <laughs> jobs. You know, people need to vote. We need to make sure they can vote safely. So and Also, you know, if they don't want to vote, maybe they can be dragged off to jail. And, you know... I mean, you got to crack a few eggs, right? Yeah, it's really, it's really amazing how so many people um, can't distinguish the difference between a government job and a private sector job. You know, <laughs> they think they're the same, one in the same, and uh, it's 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 pretty sad when when uh, you know. I mean, I guess it's understandable because it's just commonplace now. You know, people work in schools, people work in the IRS, people work all these places. 
<clears throat> but um but yeah you have to realize you have to you have to point out to these people that no philosophically that job is only created out of force right and it's fundamentally unnecessary and it doesn't reflect market demand people don't want it right uh yeah i, I remember reading a, a quote that said um if if um you know, if the government had no um, violence to enforce its edicts and mandates, it would basically just be a business that nobody wants to fund <laughs> with a useless product, right? Yes. <laughs> well, and yeah, and then every, like, I think it was somebody, somebody uh, n since 1935, no government program that has started has ever had ended. a cut yeah. or ended. Right, right. Like, we're still <laughs> giving sub, or not we, they are still giving <laughs> subsidies to sheep farmers to make army uniforms for the Korean War. <laughs> like, that's yeah. still happening. Have you ever uh, listened to Tom Woods talk about the four things the state is not? Yeah, it's a video of that. his, and he talks about how, you know, they, they want to do huge military cuts uh, around the Cold War time, and there's like a hundred a hundred million dollar military marching band program. So instead of cutting that, they went out and said, "Okay, we're going to pull our troops out of Germany and stuff where where you know, they you know, they should be if if we're playing war games here, but we're not going to cut the marching band that is absolutely completely obsolete. I mean, I can get an iPod and a, a freaking <laughs> uh, a boombox and and play any military marching order you want." But they gotta right. feed their families, Dave. You think about well, it. yeah, they do have to feed their families. I understand that, but you know, any military person, I just wish I could. Or not military, but anybody on welfare, I really wish I could just ex see them explain how they think it's okay that they live at other people's expense, like other people are stolen from. And then they say, "Well, if you don't like it, you can leave." What happens when everyone that is a positive contributor to society just leaves, and there's just nothing but welfare whores? What, what what's gonna happen? <laughs> The they system just, eventually they, collapses because they run out of other people's money. So yes, when nobody when nobody is contributing beyond uh, the the absolute minimum, then yes, it can only last so long. <laughs> somebody that's like carrying out orders to like arrest somebody because they won't merit mandatory vote. Let's just play pie in the sky. Like, how can they think that's a good thing in their head? Like, how could you like say oh, I'm just doing my job? I can understand military people's points when they're like. You know, I'm fighting over there, and these are bad guys because obviously they're fighting bad. You know, I, I work for my paycheck, and you know, and all this. If, 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 if there were good guys, they would just lay down and die, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've always thought about this. You know, there was a uh, rollover. I always thought of, there was a general or, or a, a really high-ranking guy in, in the Marines uh, during Vietnam, and he, I believe, the the, the sentiment was. Is, why does the government want us to fight a war and then ties our hands? If they honestly wanted this war to be won, we could win it in one week's time. Mm -hmm. Like we could literally turn this entire area into a flat surface. So you, what? You, what's you, the you, purpose you of this war nuke. other than a boom? Uh, no, not a nuke, but like what's the purpose of this war other than a boondoggle? Like to buy more ships, to buy more clothes, to buy more guns and ammo and all these other corporate subsidies is Keynesian economics through the military industrial complex. But like, how can you tell that to a soldier and then say, yeah, okay, I understand all that's happening, but you know, I'm just doing my job. Like mm -hmm. the problem is right there, deep down in that seed is the belief in authority that is beat into people from day one, majorly in every country in this world, but like really heavily in Christian and Muslim and Jewish ran societies. Because, you know, do bad, you're going to get punished, and then everything's going to be okay. And that sets up kids to believe that as long as someone's willing to do harm against me to enforce what they think I should do, then it's good. And they don't realize that cognitively, but that's what it is. And that's what our main topic is, is the belief in authority and how it is evil to believe in something other than your own conscience. Conscience, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, like, was there anything I said there, Danilo, that you would like to touch on? Because it just always blows my mind how people just blindly follow war. It's so lazy. It's not even... It would be one thing if they knew, they were like, you know what, I know it's evil, but and, and I'm okay with it. Mm -hmm. But it's just lazy. 
Well, if they know it's, it's one evil, thing I can't if, stand if, about it. If they it. know it's evil and they're still doing it, then uh, I would say there's a level of sociopathy in there. <laughs> Psychopathy, well, of even, course, even more than laziness. Like, like lazy is you know, you know, you you ask your kid to get get the remote control because you don't want to get up, but <laughs> you know, killing somebody because somebody told you to that's like, oh my, that's something different. <clears throat> that's like laying aside your the definition of what being a human being is, which is having the ability to reason and and you know having moral a moral compass that um that guides you um that's that's what being a human being is and if you strip that of a person they are a shell of a human being they are a robot they are no longer a human being and um and that's and that's quite sad and that's what and that's what happens when people establish authority figures that decide for them what's right and wrong and they stop thinking like 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 that we uh, we were discussing about um uh Larkin Rose was was talking recently about you know how some people look to legislation to understand the difference between right and wrong like i don't know <laughs> what's right and wrong i have to open a book written by our political masters of you know thousands of pages of legislation to figure out what i should do in my life because i have no idea <laughs> And without that, I'd be lost. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's pretty tragic, you know. There are people out there, you know. They'll think just because it's illegal means it's bad. Yep, legality and morality they they join them, but when when in fact they are diametrically opposed. They are, yeah. What, what, do you, what, what would you say, Jeremy, about that? Well, I, of course, I would agree with that too. Um, the the whole idea of people putting that much faith in, in government is, is very scary that they, they, they can't, like you, both of you said, they, they can't think for themselves. And uh, it's, it starts relatively young with most people. The whole might makes right mentality is beat into a lot of, literally beat into a lot of children um, and has been, for, has, has, yeah. has, has been for generations. Um, and when you start with that framework in life, it makes it, so much easier to be subservient later on and as you go you know especially here in this country you, as you grow up and then you go f from your parents who you know if you're lucky they didn't hit you um to literally beat that message into you but e either way you're taught you know you have to respect authority and you know respect your elders and um well that's all well and good it's you know respect is only is should only be given if it's earned you, you don't just hand it out mm -hmm. um but but most kids aren't taught that difference and it's just oh if somebody's older you need to respect them um you know i mean if, if you have really good parents they'll tell they'll at least tell you that well if you know if the person's really mean to you then no you don't have to um but on the whole it's you know respect your respect your elders respect you know when you start going to school respect your teachers um and the principal and and everybody you know all the counselors um respect if you're out in public and, and there's a police officer, you know, that, that's an authority and you respect that. So you, you get brought up learning all these things. And as you go through school, it just continues the, the indoctrination process of all the rhetoric about government, you know, where the, the people are the government and, uh, uh, you know, all the rah-rah America stuff. Um, and then so when you get to get out of school, it's already ingrained in your head that there is this authority there, there's the law. You know, the government's there to protect our rights. Um, so therefore, it's good, which is where the morality issue comes in, because obviously good, bad is, is a moral issue. Um, so and that's how people think about it. I mean, they may not use the term morality when in connection with government. Uh, they may not even think it consciously. Um, but in the back of their mind, as they're going over and, and looking at things in their life, and if a new law passes and they decide whether they agree with it or they don't agree with it, um, most people, even the ones they don't agree with, unless it's a, a, a really super tyrannical one, which we have plenty of those, um, but most people will just let certain things slide, even if they disagree with it, because they'll still fall back on, well, this is the authority, they know what's best, um, or even if they don't want to go that far, they'll say, we, we are the government, so we voted them in, so uh, they're, not trying to, they're not trying to hurt us, so I'll just live with it. But it's the law, and the law is the law, and I, and I have to follow that. And that's a mentality that is very prevalent, unfortunately, and it's why we find ourselves in this current position. 
uh, which is funny because I, you know, on that on that point in particular, I was talking about this earlier today with a couple of people uh, about how the rule of law, uh, which most people would say, you know, that's why you need to follow, you know, it's it's there to, you know, to for for the greater good. So we have. The, this this rule of law and that's that that's why we can respect the authority and it's not the rule of men um you know if, if that was the case then i'd be totally against a lot of these things that, that that are happening um but that's just such a ridiculous concept because the rule of law is no different than the rule of men unless something other than men are writing the laws mm. <laughs> But most people don't even like they just say that they, they utter that phrase. And it actually I, I thought about this today because somebody said it to me when I was having a discussion and they threw the rule of the difference between the rule of law and the rule of men. And I said, that's ludicrous. <laughs> um, who's writing the laws? <laughs> if it's men writing the laws, it's still authorities the rule writing of men. the laws. Well, yeah, they, you know, I've, I've, I've used the word a bunch of times already in, in past episodes, but compartmentalize. They just they separate that section and they think, oh, <laughs> yeah, they're just, they're 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 people, and they're us, and we're the government. But because we give them these special roles, then now they have these special powers that they didn't have before, and now they are authority. <laughs> so they could they can tell us what to do, and we need to follow. And far too many people will just like you said. I, I think it was you, you were saying, Dave. Um, you know, if 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 they think it's illegal, then it must be bad, and that's why so many people come down on the litany of victimists. Yeah, like you know, uh, alcohol prohibition to me is like uh, the pulling of the curtain back and re revealing the uh, the wizard. You know, <laughs> so to say, like that's the analogy I, I like to use a lot. It's like okay, so if laws are arbitrary, which they are, they they make no sense. <clears throat> How is it bad one day to own, drink, make alcohol, and then 24 hours later, it was good? It was okay. Like how? Like what happened? Did we go through some like time space continuum where we're in a different universe now? Mm -hmm. Like what? What changed in those 24 hours to make it good? Oh, some people in white robes bang the gavel and bam, wham, done. <laughs> Like nope. they no, they no, they decide allowed. morality. They decided morality <laughs> for that is it. They decided actions that are okay for their tax cattle. That is it. And you know, it just blows my mind. Just certain things you can be like uh, driving with a chicken in your on your head in Illinois is illegal. Well, what? How does that make like you've wasted taxpayer money right in that law? You wrote like that is so ridiculous. <laughs> What it was was some state senator over there probably got ran off the road and there was some chicken flying around in some dude's car and he was like, you have that chicken on your head. There's a new law. So people are going to use that law, that ar arbitrary law, if they get a hold of the reins of it to enact their own will. And you're going to have people believe that it's okay because they're the supposed authority. You know, a lot of people say it's the social contract is the reason. And I just don't really see – like. Maybe contract isn't the word, but like, I don't see how people even say the word social contract. Like, did everyone get together and sign a thing, like in some kind of like alternate universe or, or something? Like, how did, how does someone, like, as far as I remember, when I, when I was birthed and I was coming out of the vaginal canal, <laughs> I don't remember in one hand getting handed a pen and other, like, on the way to the doctor's hand, signing a contract you that signed just it, you signed an amniotic fluid. I, yeah, I signed an amniotic fluid, and it, it was boom. I agreed all the rules here, and obviously, if you know anything about laws here, you can't sign a contract until you're 19. You know, and I, you know, I've said that to some people. The social contract's null and void because if we're going to just use U.S. law, you can't sign a contract in most states unless you're 19. Well, okay. <laughs> Then once people get 19, they got to choose, either sign it or leave. I'm like, that is the most backwards ass thing I've ever thought in my life or heard in my life. <laughs> oh, yeah. you, you're a native and you've grew up here your whole life. But if you don't sign this contract, basically putting you in eternal tax slavery um, and rules that you don't agree to and an authority that you don't consent to, you're out of here. 
It's just brainwashing, man. Mm-hmm. What What are your thoughts on the social contract, Danilo? Yeah, social contract. Uh, <laughs> yeah, like you said, it doesn't exist. Uh, even even if you if you go all the way back to the founders, right? You you have a a bunch of old guys in a smoky room, right? Drafting up a piece of paper, and they're deciding for everybody else what they're gonna do, right? Even at that time, a hundred percent of people did not consent. <laughs> You know, and even if they did, they're all dead right now. So nobody today <laughs> consented to that document, right? However, we are all supposedly beholden to that document, right? <laughs> Some somehow, which which daily the uh, federal government violates completely, <laughs> wantonly. You know, with with the things that they do every single day. And by the way, Dave, you mentioned wasting taxpayer money. To me, that that phrase is a redundant phrase. I don't I don't think there is such a thing as a useful way <laughs> to use <laughs> stolen funds, right? Yes. I, no, How no, can you not like, waste in the spectrum money? of things like <laughs> frivolous things right. i would say i mean there's there's severities there's degrees uh mm. uh you know you know you waste it on a bridge to nowhere or you can waste it at killing people in in iraq but you know they're both wasting <laughs> they're both wasting stolen what was it this the state of Alaska literally had just excess money and was like, hey, you know what? Let's just build a bridge that literally goes to nowhere. <laughs> it literally goes to – it ends and they're just like, welcome uh, welcome to nowhere. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, It goes to nowhere and that was all taxpayer money. Yeah. That could have gone back. <clears throat> Instead of building that bridge, they could have what? Cut everybody a check for that money? Mm-hmm. Nope. Never crossed their mind. Yeah, yeah, and the other thing is, um, you know, talking about boondoggles, how how government creates these projects and you know builds these things like a bridge to nowhere. <laughs> that's not, you know, it's not in need. It's not demanded by the public. Um, Four million dollars to find out why lesbians are <laughs> adversely fat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, ridiculous studies like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and I think in California, they're uh, they're I'm not. I think they're probably still doing it. They're trying to t- trying to um, build this huge. Uh, re- mono rail, something like that. Um, yeah, the high speed, ra- the high speed rail. Yeah, yes. that's right, high speed rail. The- and 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 I mean, just it doesn't really matter what they do, what they spend it on. The the whole idea of having funds that are that are uh, re- that are obtained by force and then used, it's like it has no no um, you know association with market demand, the price mechanism, with com- competition, which which would tell you you know the proper. Um, you know the proper cost of a project, or you know, the, you know, profit loss. You know h- how much return you'll have, right? All these, all these different forces determine what you will do as a business, right? If you can make money, or you, or you won't, right? You're not going to do it if you're not going to make money. But government has no such restrictions, so they have no idea the cost, and they, frankly, they don't really care, right? Which is why post office can function at a, like what, sixteen billion dollar debt, right? <laughs> <laughs> or or Amtrak can lose eight hundred million dollars like on burgers. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, and the other thing is uh talking going back to the um legality and morality discussion, uh what I tell a lot of people is, you know, eight uh nineteen thirty three, I think uh I think alcohol was still illegal and gold was legal to own, right? Nineteen thirty four um, gold is illegal. Alcohol is legal. <laughs> Completely the opposite. <laughs> and so I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute. What can I do? What am I allowed to do today? I, I got to ask them. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's kind of it's so silly. Yeah, it's like it's like almost going back to school. Like, what am I allowed to do? Can I do this? Am I allowed to? <laughs> it's like, again, you know, deriving morality from authority, not it's like they're, you know, not encouraging people to think on their own, right? They need to appeal to a higher authority to live their life, basically. So, so Jeremy, when I tell you what year that the social contract, the idea of a social contract, became into human existence, I just want to hear your response. Uh, it, it, it was an idea that came about by Jean Jacques Rousseau in 1762. That, that, yeah, that I, 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 well, I know of Rousseau, so <laughs> that makes sense. I don't know how um, anything from 70, 1762 could politically could be applicable today. <laughs> well, I don't, I don't, I don't know about that. I mean, I'm sure there are certain things that you could that could hold over, but the the whole idea behind the contract uh, is is ludicrous in my mind. Um, just like you guys were saying. 
Um, it's not even so much that, you know, I mean, I've, I've said, uh, you know, smugly when somebody has mentioned that to me, you know, that I, I never signed anything. And um, even if you're talking about a verbal contract, um, I mean, I'm, I'm, I try to be a stickler for language and, and you know, and, and words have meaning. And if you're going to call something a contract, even if it's a verbal contract that you somehow agree to by, like you were saying, uh, you know, once you reach the age of 18, 19, okay, then you have to consent. Um, even if it's a verbal one, the, you know, contract law, the first two steps of any contract, there has to be an offer and then an acceptance or a rejection. You don't actually get to make that. There, there's no official offer. It's just, well, okay, as you said, you know, okay, you, you, you've been under your parents' wing for 18 years. Everything you know is here. Now you're going to make a decision. <laughs> and you can't say no. Or if you do, that means you got to get, you pack your bag and get out. So it, that right there nullifies the fact that it could be a contract at all. Um, and both of you mentioned consent, which is, is the second part of that is, um, you know, we men I mentioned last week and you brought it up earlier, Dave, about the consent of the governed. Um, and that ties to the to social contract. Uh, but most people don't understand what consent actually means because okay. you, you can't give consent for another person. What kind of socialist bullcrap is that? Consent of the governed. <laughs> just blows my mind. Well, it's 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 smartly placed rhetoric in order to convince the masses that they are actually in control and they are the masters to the, uh, you know, powerful yet uh, limited government uh, slave, uh, which is completely the opposite way around. They're you know they are not they are not our servants. If they were, if they were our servants, um, they would not be allowed to get away with the things that they get away with. Um, because being in government, especially in, uh, in the political and the enforcement wings, you have special powers that the average individual does not, uh, you know, you have special rights if you want to use that word. I mean, we, that's a discussion we could get into another point about my feelings specifically on rights, but if you want to use, you know, there's certain rights that if you believe you have, well, they're, they're, they're limited. You, you don't have, you know all these rights, uh, you know, you don't have the right to walk up to your neighbor and demand his money, uh, even if you claim that you're going to do something for him um, and say that you don't have a choice in the matter. And if you don't agree with me uh, and you don't give me the money, then I have the right to lock you in a cage. Um, and if you resist me locking you in a cage, I have the right to kill you. You don't have that right. I don't have that right. But somehow law enforcement officers gain that right just because a certain group of people got together and made a decision and claimed consent from everybody and decided that now these rights that didn't exist for the individual somehow magically exist for the group. And most people don't want to look at that because they just think, Authority, authority, authority. That's what I've been taught. They are the authority. I have to respect them. I have to obey the law, even if I don't agree with it, um, because it's it's the right thing to do. And people just don't want to look at that. Um, it's it's hard to get through to them, especially people that are in law enforcement. Um, you know, as it is with any. Um, field really the closer you are to the action so to speak um, especially if it involves government it's a lot harder to see the contradictions that are wrapped inside what you're being asked to do um, you know or even any field you know even like in, in the medical field too same thing um, doctors it's a lot harder to get through to them on certain things that may not um, actually be be the truth of what we're being told, um, you know, if they're if they're subsidized in any way, you know, if they work for public hospitals and stuff like that, um, it's a lot harder to get through to them, you know. And like I said, in any field, it's the same way. The closer you are, so police officers, you know, all law enforcement, it's it's really hard to explain this to them because all they think is, I was taught that I have to enforce the law. That's my job, even if I don't agree with the law. I have to enforce that. I have to enforce that just law. And I'm, orders. Yeah, I'm just doing my job, which gets really tired 
<laughs> after a while. <laughs> um, because no matter what you say to that, uh, usually the average uh, law enforcement officer will get mad. I know because I've said it to a lot of them. Because um, my next my next line to that is that didn't work. That line you, you realize that didn't work in the Nuremberg trials. <laughs> Why do you think that line works now? How is that different? <laughs> but we're different yeah. than the Nazis. They killed a bunch of people. <laughs> yeah, we don't and the, <laughs> the government hasn't killed thirty million people since World War Two for well, your freedom. Does. Well, that doesn't enter their mind because what Danilo said was was the first response. They get mad. That's what I was yeah. talking about. They get mad immediately. Think you're talking about well, you're trying to compare them to Nazis. No, I'm just comparing the actual defense they used. Yeah. That defense, you know, even even as corrupt as the system, all the systems were back then. Um, even even then, they decided, yeah, we're, that's not going to fly. <laughs> mm -hmm. Just following orders is not an acceptable answer uh, to. Uh, so, to, to get yourself out of war crimes like that. So even if it's on a smaller scale, like shrinking it down, the logic doesn't change. You know, you are still, you are still responsible for your own actions. Oh, come on, man. I'm just Nazi light. <laughs> it's like diet cola, you know. But uh, I think definitions are really important. And for anyone that's following along with this conversation and doesn't know what definition of authority we're running on because – there's the Webster's Dictionary version that I like to say, and then there's the correct and uh, Socratically defined uh, words that we use. And for authority, the definition that we're running on is the right to give orders, make decisions, or enforce obedience or rule you. Not, not the ability, the right to rule you. That is what we believe authority is. And anybody that says they believe in authority, because okay, be you believe that someone has the right, not ability. Like a warlord coming in and cutting off everybody's hands or feet or whatever and says, you're doing what I say now. They're not the authority. They're the, your oppressor, but you don't believe them to be your, the authority. You may fear getting your head cut off or your tongue cut out. But they, they don't have – you don't, in your eyes, they don't have the right to rule you. Like Danilo, one of the best examples is, is, is okay, so there's this gang in this town, and uh, they put a strict curfew out for any non-gang members, all right? And if you're not in that gang, they will shoot on sight. Well, actually, this gang is just they're, – they're, they're wearing police uniforms, <laughs> and people like they're they're like they think it's bad they're like oh that's horrible that's horrible and you say police uniforms they're like <laughs> mental gymnastics <laughs> and uh they just don't see the the difference yeah that's, that's because a good, of the belief in authority that's a good distinction you know it's it's not just um it's not just the ability to to control or subjugate someone. It's the the right to having the moral right because you know the ability is like a you know like a thief or a mugger or, or a rapist or or a gang member, right? No, nobody considers the nobody considers the gang member's actions to be law, right? And moral and just, right? They consider them to be criminal, right? But when you expand it and it becomes federal government, that's law, the rule of law that. Mm -hmm everybody should follow right without question and and one thing i get from a lot of people is um <laughs> they say daniel why do you hate the government so much i mean the government is just people you know we're all just people how can you just hate the like they're not special people they're just people <laughs> and i'm like you're right they are just people so then why do you need uh it reminds me of a mary rothbard quote you know we we give we give the government all the guns and all the power and then say limit yourself <laughs> Here's right? an atomic bomb. Don't kill anyone. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, I, I mean, you're right. They are just people, but we have all hallucinated this myth of authority that they, for some reason, have rights that we do not have. Right? They like uh, I was I was at the um, the museum the other day, and 
and I saw the uh, you know beehive, you know they had you know in the glass case, and they were saying the difference between the queen bee and the worker bee, right? And in that instance, I was telling my wife later, this is interesting interesting uh, idea that in that instance there is a physical anatomical difference between a worker bee and a queen bee queen bee is enormous right worker bee is tiny right they never get to be the size of the queen bee but that's not like that with with uh, you know government and, and and humans you know you know people in 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 uh, you know in, the, in congress or in the senate or uh, or in uh, you know the president vice president they don't have bigger brains they're they're not <laughs> They're not different than everyone else. They are the same. <laughs> well, also the, the the bees will kill the queen if she's not producing enough offspring or uh-huh. yes. uh, now our defective clones or yeah. whatever they call them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, they depend on her for survival as much as she depends on them for survival. Mm-hmm. So it's a m- mutual relationship between the two. Yeah. So that's when I always say, you know, people say, well, it works for ants because there's a queen ant. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, well, no, we're not ants, are we? <laughs> yeah. I, I, I just checked. I'm not an ant. <laughs> yeah, the difference is we, you know, you, you know, yeah, people make, make um, comparisons to the hierarchical nature in, um, you know, in various animals. Uh, mammals or you know bees or ants or whatever and and you know you have to say no what's the difference the difference is we have the neofrontal cortex we reason we think we can philosophize we can reflect on our past we can reflect on our future critically think <clears throat> yeah critical analysis um <clears throat> that's that's the fundamental difference that people have to keep in mind that you know uh, we're not you know although we are you know evolutionary speaking we have descended from um, you know the primates and the animal world, but we are fundamentally very different, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, not only are we different, but even if you want to take like those analogies to the you know the different animal hierarchies, they do have they do have that hierarchy, but they're doing it for survival. And you know if if a, if one of the one of the wheels falls off, everything starts to go. Um, you know, but there's still some can. They don't have the capability, I don't think, but there's still some consent there that they're all getting along, you know, getting along so they can all get along <laughs> and move along. They can um, exist. <laughs> the, uh, you know, the, the difference with us is that, you know, these, the people that are quote unquote in charge have extra rights and, and are able to get away with these things that we are not. So it's not it's not a it's not a symbiotic relationship. It's a parasitic relationship, um, and you know th- because it, it's this the similarity is they they need us to they need us to function more than we need them to function, um, as opposed to you know you were saying with the queen with the queen and the workers um, where they need each other. It doesn't work so much <laughs> in, in our situation. We don't. Most people think we do. Most people would assume we have a symbiotic relationship with the government. Um, but it's more parasitic because they need us more than we need them. Because getting back to the earlier discussion about you know a certain number of people just stopping paying taxes or stopping you know if the mandatory voting b- bill ever came up and passed, um, you know just the, that mass civil disobedience uh, would cause it would would cause would cause havoc for the system um, uh, because they need us more than we need them. I don't think they could executive order mandatory. Now that I'm thinking about it. Because every voting change that has ever existed is in the Constitution, like, de facto. So I don't think that they could ever just flat out say mandatory voting's in. Here, stamp it, Prez. Blow! Like, I think the states would have to ratify it. <clears throat> I'm sure they would. I was just bringing the example back. No, I was just thinking about this. it, you know, just now when you were talking about it. But, you know, like, the, the, the main thing we want people to realize is <clears throat> you believe in something outside of, like, it's it, – and, and, external authority you know we want people to realize that you're you know i ask people sometimes who is the ultimate authority in your life you know some people will say god some people will say you know you know doing the right thing but what what myself whatever and the only correct answer is you you are the ultimate authority in your life because if you believe in God, you chose to believe in God. You weren't forced to believe in God. You, uh, you, in some scenarios, you might have been, but still, you chose in your mind to believe that God is real. Same way with government. 
You know, even with government, even with a soldier with a gun in your face saying, we have the right to do this, if you believe they do, they do. But if they, if you believe they don't, they don't. So you still have the authority over your body. And that's the biggest thing I wish I could get across to anybody that is willing to do inhuman, ab abhorrent things on behalf of government. They're not there to help you. You're a tool for them. You're just a piece of trash to them. And to the day that people look at politicians in the same light that they look at child rapists and the scum of society, even worse than dirt, instead of these people that we should lord over and, 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 and just respect and, 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 oh, that person's special, the day that that changes is the day I'm looking forward to. Because when it becomes fashionably when it becomes such a negative to become a politician that it people won't do it like you're seeing now more people they're having to lower and lower and lower and lower the standards to become a, a law enforcement officer in this country in in most states because no one wants to do it because they're getting so much bad press so keep it up guys you know I have like I said, no hate in my heart for cops because most of them are blind to the fact of what they're doing because they believe it's right. So instead of being mad at the cops, be mad at the people who have been tricked into believing the myth of authority. Channel your, 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 your efforts correctly because tell, you know just telling cops that they're fucking pigs and all this oh, – that was my second F. Dang it. <laughs> that they're pigs and they're, they're trash and <clears> – <throat> baby killers and all this. You tell a soldier they're a baby killer. You're not winning any mind over. You're not changing. What you're doing is helping them, like I said, build a castle. They're going to keep, they're going to defend what they've done because they believe it is right if you attack like that. And there's nothing that I can tell another person in this world, especially someone that is liberty minded, is to treat everyone's ego, especially when you're trying to talk to them about liberty, because you can you can be having the most civil conversation and say one thing, boom, they blow up. They get angry and start yelling because that cognitive dissonance kicks in and the ouchy, 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 this hurts to think about kicks in. Hmm. And the only response the human mind has for that, for new information that is so completely opposite of what they've been taught their whole life, is anger, hate, all this other stuff that comes out. So you're dealing with, you know, a fragile little egg, fragile little egg, all right? Don't, don't come up poking it. You're going to poke a hole through it. This is the Easter episode. <laughs> <laughs> it is. <laughs> excellent, you know? excellent uh, reference there, Dave. <laughs> you know, if, if we want to wrap up, well, anything that you would say to anybody that, you know, maybe they're, they've, they've thought in their head, holy shit, I shouldn't have done that. But I would have gotten fired and lost my job and went broke and not had not been able to feed my family. What What's something you would tell them, Danilo? Like, because that is such a – like that's where the rubber meets the road because they can believe something's bad all they want, but they're not going to drop something that's feeding their family. They're not going to say, this is bad. I'm going to do it. I've got to do it anyway because I've got to feed my family. I've got to eat. I've got to – live you know yeah the, it makes me uh it reminds me of a larkin quote uh he says um i'm not afraid of the mouths the, the stalins the hitlers the pol pots of the world i'm afraid of the millions of people that uh hallucinate that they have the right to rule and will therefore carry out their mandates without fail <laughs> right um and that's exactly what you said dave like we we can't really get angry at the irs agent or the police officer right in their mind they're just doing their job right and that's just and right for them right so you can't really attack them individually but what you have to what you have to try to uh, reveal is their philosophical inconsistencies and and that's that takes a little more finesse and nuance for us to do, right? <laughs> you can't just call like uh, 
like another friend of mine uh, uh, who we're going to have on, hopefully, um, he said, you know, you can't just call a soldier a welfare whore. Like, that's not going to that's not going to help him to see volunteerism a little more clearly. You know? Even like, though that's the perfect definition. Yeah, that's just like you said, they, they're just going to erect their barriers that much higher, that much higher. Um, you know, you have to you have to gently strip away their you know you have to remove the pillars that are that are holding up their fortress their philosophical status fortress right and that's you know that's where you slowly the plant seeds reveal the inconsistency yeah reveal the inconsistencies the contradictions and and do it as gently as possible um and so yeah, so, so that's what we have to deal with is the belief in the myth of authority because it is fundamentally a belief just like there is a belief in santa claus a belief in the easter bunny <laughs> belief in the tooth fairy it's just a belief right and and it's all in the mind right statism is all in the mind um you know government does exist in the sense that you know you see the buildings you see the tanks you see the guns but without the belief in the myth of authority it's just a building right it's not an irs uh building that that you know receives stolen funds it's just a building <laughs> you know it's just a, a man with a gun it's not a special guy who can kill people and still go on a paid vacation, right? He's just a guy with a gun, right? And and with a shiny metal badge. He has got no no more rights than any of us do. So that's what we have to undermine and uproot is the 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 wretched uh you know the <laughs> the, the the wretched nightmarish hallucination of of authority that everybody has pl implanted since authoritarian uh, upbringing, right? Since you know, and and I firmly believe that the parents are the first, the first ones to basically prepare the children for the authoritarian uh, uh, teachings of government school, right? They are the first. They are preparing the kids for that. You know, when you spank your kids, when you um, when you yell at your kids, when you say, you know, do as I say, not as I do. When you when you say, you know, when when you act as though your children are inferiors, are your subjects, are your property, you are preparing them for state worship. <laughs> that's that's the way I feel. What do, what do you think, Jeremy? Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, I, I said that a little earlier that it it starts at, it does start at home, um, and it's just you know the parents lay the groundwork. Um, most of the time, unwittingly, they don't, you know, because they just, that's how they were raised and that's how their, their parents were raised. And it, it goes on and on and on. And, and, and much like, um, much like the belief in authority itself, it, it, a lot of it, uh, the justifications that can be attempted to be given for it, which obviously don't pan out. Um, but in, in the status mind, they do, they're all, uh, you know, it's, a the, a fa fallacy of, uh, the appeal to antiquity fallacy, mm -hmm. which, uh, you, you know, because you that, that's all that? they've ever known. Could you explain uh, that phrase, the appeal to antiquity? Oh, the appeal to antiquity is just the, an appeal to history. It's, you know, that's so like the way traditions? it's always, it's always, yeah, it's always been, been, it's always been done this way, so it must always be done this way. Okay, yeah, that's, that's, I just wanted other people to hear that because maybe they've never heard that, you know, and, mm -hmm. and I think I had a pretty good quote about that the other day, you know, about the, the, you know, like a drunk clinging to a bottle, mm -hmm. an empty bottle, just hoping for those last few drops of comfort. <laughs> Statists hang on to traditions that subjugate them and their families just like that. I, I, that's not exactly how it phrased, but that's the meat of the thing. And that is that appeal to antiquity that you were talking about, antiquity. Yes. Yeah, so that's, you know, that's all they've ever known. So that's what they bring on their children and, and the cycle just keeps going and going. And then, you know, as I said earlier, it goes to the teacher, it, teachers perpetuate it. And then once you're out in the world, uh, you're all ready to go dealing with this authority around you that you've been taught your whole life needs to be there. Um, you know, and, and as both of you were saying, trying to get through to certain people, especially the so-called authority figures is, is difficult and it, it it does take finesse you're absolutely right Danilo um, I mean I'm guilty of, of throwing around some of the phrases you guys had mentioned um, I, me too you know, we, I mean we all do but if, if you're going to have an honest discussion with one of them and try to um, you know unfortunately like like you both said it 
the defenses go up and it's you know the str- the stress the stressors activate and it's it's either fight or flight they either don't want to talk about it anymore and, th- and they'll literally walk away or run away from you uh, or they or they'll get mad and then they'll fight they'll try to fight you on it um, the best thing to do with that is just constantly ask that you know just like with anybody else ask them questions don't force feed them information and and try to draw them out and try to get them to see and and because tr- the contradictions are there obviously um, but they're blind to it so you have to lead them to those contradictions and then try to get them to explain it on their own and anybody with a reasonable amount of intelligence when given the opportunity will actually start to think they may not be convinced but they will start to question it and even if it doesn't sink in then you you know you plant that seed and then maybe the next time something happens where another you know the contradiction rises again it's like oh wait a minute there's that thing again maybe maybe i should look further into that you know it's you know as as i was saying before also it's it's tough because when they when you're that close to the actual um, action. Um, if you're if you are a, a, a law enforcement officer, or if you're in the military, and somebody tries to talk to you, it's it's so much easier to be blinded because you are not only have you been brought up to believe in authority just like everybody else. Now you've become the authority, and you have these special powers that nobody else has. And it's hard not to get, even for the most humble person, it's hard not to get a slightly bigger head about that and, and think that you may be above the law. And, you know, as, as you were saying, Dave, that the, it's getting, they're lowering the standards for people to get into the, the police department because not as many people want to anymore. Um, you know, well, they're also paying, if you have college debt, you, can, you become a police officer, they'll pay it off now. Ooh, man. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. I just, we just, we just saw that the other day. That's just. Man, that's just. If you don't think that's special rights and that's not welfare, like I'm sorry, that is welfare. Well, of course it is, but nobody so wants to see it. when a cop says they're not a welfare recipient, it just really upsets me. Like that they they don't even see the contradictions. But how, how are we doing on time right now, Danilo? Or Jeremy? Yeah, we, yeah. So we'll we'll give our final comments. Um, so. Oh, yeah. I, I just want I just wanted to finish up and, and say it's you know get, getting through to them is is going to be tough because they're so close to it that it, it makes it even it makes it even harder for them to be objective. Obviously, um, you know it's an uphill battle. Um, you know, one of the things I did want to talk about that I'll just get to briefly is, you know, you, you look back to something like the uh, the Milgram experiments in the 60s. Uh, what was it? Uh, 61, I think they started that. Mm-hmm. Um, for anybody who doesn't know, you know, Dr. Stanley Milgram, uh, it was right after the uh, trial of uh, Adolf Eichmann, um, uh, you know, one of the Nazis, um, where, you know, somebody who tried to use the just following orders defense. And, and he started up uh, a, a bunch of uh, psychological pro- uh, research studies. Uh, about the belief in authority and trying to get people to see, uh, trying to get to see if if people would listen to a supposed authority, even if they thought they were hurting somebody, would they still follow through? I mean, and and those things were insane because you know they basically you know again for anybody who doesn't know briefly, basically they had three people involved. Um, but nobody really, only one of them, I think, knew the actual truth. And there was the, um, the person administrating the, the test. Um, there was a person who was supposed to be uh, the, uh, the actual tester. And then there was the testee, somebody who was in a different room, who was actually an actor. But the person who was the tester didn't know that. And they had a, you know, dials in front of them. And they were both basically supposed to be you know, sending electric shocks. Uh, they were asking questions. And if the person got the question wrong, they would administer a shock. And they kept increasing the voltage. The, the tester didn't realize the whole time that there was no there was no electricity. The person in the room was an actor and was faking it. Um, the whole point was to see how far they would go when they had this person standing over them saying, "No, no, you agreed to this. You have to continue. You have to. Um, it, it's okay. You you said you would do this. You you have to follow through. You have to follow through." And a ridiculous amount of people went all the way through with this and basically delivered what they thought was a lethal dose of electricity to somebody they had never met just because 
a supposed authority figure told them. And, and, scary. and even after they stopped, it, they, they stopped responding, they kept delivering the higher and higher doses. <laughs> yes, be, because, yeah, because they were told. I mean, I, I read up on it again recently and there was like four, there was like a string of four uh, responses that the, the overseer was supposed to give, you know, in escalating orders like, you know, you did agree to this. Um, the second time around was no. We really want. We really need you to do this. No, we really want. We really want you to do this. And like the last one was like, no, you absolutely must do this. Oh, and you know, yeah. And there was, you know, there was there were some people that dropped out. You know, the people that actually were virtuous just couldn't take it anymore and got sick to their stomachs and so they couldn't c commit. But there were w there was a, a huge number of people that went all the way through with this. Like because the authority, of them. Yeah. yeah, it was just because just because the authority told them to because it's mm -hmm. so ingrained, and you know that was you know, like I said that was like in the, the early '60s, um, mm -hmm. but it's been replicated multiple times since then, and that's what we're up against. And the uh, the problem is that people just they are so accustomed to having that authority there and having that belief for it that they don't want to question it and because of that they become reliant on the authority and they become less responsible with themselves and there's actually a quote from uh dr milgram uh that, that during uh, his write-ups afterwards that speaks directly to this point uh, which is the disappearance of a sense of responsibility is the most far-reaching consequence of the submission to authority and you know, I, I've always I've always said that you know the the personal responsibility thing that you you lose that when you when you trust in government because you're giving more and more responsibility over to them to do things, and that's always been a problem. But when I read that the first time, it really hit me. It's it's it really is. You just it's, you let go of 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 these responsibilities and just hand them over to somebody else, and you literally do not have control over many of the actions of your life anymore. Um, which ties into some of our other discussions, you know, about the whole slave-master relationship, wh which people don't want to see because they think it's just emotional language. But it's true. You 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 give up that responsibility and you just willingly hand it over, um, not thinking, based on what you were brought up to believe, without questioning, and you you become a slave. You literally become a slave to this system, whether you want to think of it or not. Whether like you want to look at it or not. Shawshank Redemption, right? <laughs> yeah, He'd been in so, prison for so long. When he got out, he was like, "I don't know. I want to go back to prison." Mm. Yeah, it's it's scary. Or like Pavlov's you know? Pav Pav dogs, you know, it's just like a the bell. They they they, they it's, it's it's they don't even have to think about it anymore. You hear the bell, the saliva it's, starts. It's right? it's passing the buck on your own morality is what it is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I I wasn't. You know, I had no choice in the matter. It's his fault. <laughs> and pretty soon that that crap gets old. Yeah. And you got to realize that, you know, only you make those decisions. You know, like somebody was saying that if you're joining the uh, military to fight for freedom, you might as well just get a gun and shoot yourself in the head because the world would be more safe with no soldiers. <laughs> if there was no soldiers in any country... In any port on the earth, the world will be more safe. And and the reason is because they they have completely uh, abandoned their own moral Morality. code and their 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 ability to reason for themselves, right from wrong, right. And they Correct, handed yeah. it over to to an authority figure. I mean, and that sounds a little harsh, but you know, he was like, if you truly believe that you want to fight for people's freedom and and protect the innocent, just pull a gun out, <laughs> shoot yourself in the head. You will have a far greater outcome than going and fighting for any government that subjugates more people and uses you as the tool for it. I was just going to say the um, diffusion of, uh, of, of responsibility and loss of accountability is definitely necessary when, when you're describing government, especially the military, right? You know, it's, it's not my fault. I'm just following orders and, and, the, and his superior, you know, I'm just following orders and, his superior, and it goes all the way up. The chain of command, or as I like to call it, the chain of obedience, right? It's more, more accurately said, you know, because uh, everybody takes control. You know, and, and yet nobody, 
nobody claims responsibility, but in truth, everybody is responsible because we are always de always deciding right from wrong. We are always making decisions. Even even if you think you're an order follower, every single day you're making your own decisions to follow to follow orders. Right? You're making a conscious choice to abandon your own moral compass. Right? And that's not something that you can so readily detach from, as I think PTSD. Um, uh, illustrates you know you cannot at detach yourself from your own conscience it's physically impossible you know then you would really not be a human anymore you'd be a robot <laughs> there's no difference yeah yeah you're right you know and uh, humans aren't programmed to be like that you know it's it's inhuman <clears throat> but uh, uh in a few weeks, maybe eight or nine, we're going to have a friend of ours on named Donnie. He just got out of the army, and he is, you know, 25 years in, I believe, maybe longer. And he is a full-blown voluntarist, and he's going to come on and talk specifically to freedom activists and freedom spreaders, whatever you want to call it. Uh, on like how to ap even approach someone in the military with the ideas that we hold, like how to even just even open up and start talking to them in the most non-confrontational way. Because he says he's been doing it for years in the uh, in the army, and he just got out. So I, I had some discussions with him about you know like how do you become a voluntarist and then not just immediately get out of the army, but you know, his, his point was that he could do more damage on the inside, which I see his point, you know, I'm, you know, it's whatever, but, um, we, we guys, we really appreciate you if you, uh, downloaded or watched or, you know, whatever, however you, uh, found this media, we really appreciate you checking it out. Uh, if you want to find any info about us, you can go to the seeds of and, uh, if you want to help us out in any way, pay for uh, podcast hosting, pay for website fees or anything, you can scroll down to the bottom, click on the Amazon uh, Associates link, uh, and that will um, on our website, and that will let you go through a click through to Amazon.com. And anything you buy from there, no money gets added to anything. It kicks us back a little money um, to help pay for things. Uh, so that's pretty cool. If you want to do that, help us out. Cost you nothing. Cost us nothing. You know. But if you don't, oh well. Thanks for checking us out, anyways. Uh, for me, I'm signing off. Uh, Danilo, Jeremy, you got any last minute thing you want to say? Yeah. I, well, I, I I want to finish with uh, one one last quote. Uh, I've taken over Dave's role for the uh, evening. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, the, uh, you know, my, my message to everybody, you know, we, we've said before, you know, question everything. Well, for this episode, I'd like to say for those people that may be listening that uh, may be st still stuck in that authority cycle, uh, you know, start questioning authority as, you know, as well as everything else. But start questioning a little more and, and try, to, try, to, try to wrap your head around why, why you feel this way. And why you believe that that you should be beholden to some authority that you had no decision making process really in, other than getting to uh, select a couple of new masters every once in a while, because um, the system was there long before you. Uh, but the quote that that's related to that, uh, I found it a bunch of different places, and it's 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 claimed to be a Da Vinci quote. I'm not positive if it is. At the very least, it's attributed to him. Uh, but nothing strengthens authority so much as silence. So start questioning and start asking questions and uh, don't keep quiet about it. You know, once, once you start to figure these things out, share that message, plant those seeds and uh, pass it along to others uh, because the quicker we can get that critical mass to just give up the belief in authority, a lot of our problems start going away. Uh, you know, it won't, it's not going to take a revolution. Uh, it, those never seem to end well. But I, I don't want to see that. Yeah, I, our, I don't, I, <laughs> our next episode uh, is going to feature an author named Jim Davis. And the uh, subject matter of the podcast is going to be, is revolution a good idea? Or why is specifically political revolution a 
bad idea. So yeah, that to, to play on what you just said, yeah, that we're definitely going to be talking about that next week, and that is a big thing that pops into people's head when you start thinking this. Well, should we get violent and take them over? Well, you'll find out next week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that kind of reminds me of a Gandhi quote. He said, um, "You know, you can cage me, you can break my bones, you can beat me, you can even kill me, but you will not have my obedience." <laughs> and and I think that's that's quite right. You know, once once you establish your own self ownership and you, you establish that you are the primary, um, you know, authority in your own life, then nothing can change that, right? <laughs> you know, nothing at all. Um, and and so you, that's our job, I think, is to help people to internalize that. You know, that statism has been beaten into people for you know twelve years of of. Uh, Attendance Their whole life government school yeah <laughs> since since childhood and uh and it's not easy breaking uh or or, or just transforming that and um <laughs> and showing its inconsistencies because because it's all you know it's all hallucinations it's not based on reason not based on logic it's just it's just you know it's like how do you how do you prove to you know if somebody that god doesn't exist you can't right but you just have to be patient i mean not to say that you know because uh, the, there are some there are some christian people that that do claim to be anarchist and uh, and anarcho capitalist which is fine completely fine with me um but the idea is that we we have to be patient and like you said dave plant seeds and 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 you know you know i i like that quote because it's not about being violent like like you know you can oppose authority by just standing up and just speaking your mind right violence is not necessary at all violence is indeed counterproductive right so the way things are advanced in society is people speaking their minds and writing down what they think is truth regardless of prevailing paradigms or the status quo right and uh, and that's how things get changed and uh, and the job's not done yet we still have a lot of work to do oh for sure <laughs> so uh, thank you very much uh, for listening uh, before we go I'd just like, li like to let everyone know that in addition to supporting us through the Amazon uh, link at the bottom of the page you can also uh, support us through Bitcoin and PayPal donations we would accept uh, Fiat currency in any form. We do not uh, discriminate. Uh, there, uh, we uh, <laughs> freedom to associate or dissociate, right? We uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm working on the Bitcoin link on the, on the website. I'm having a little difficulties, but if you have a Bitcoin app on your phone, you can take a picture of our QR code and send us however many Bitcoins you want. Nice. We will if, put them to good use. If, I promise. If you want to forfeit currency, we by all means we will find a way to receive it. Don't worry about that. Yeah. <laughs> Help us keep the lights on, folks. I mean, yeah. look at Dave. We already we already lost Dave. We line. lost Dave. Uh, <laughs> ne 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 next week, one of the two of us. Ah, oh, oh, Dave. Oh, sorry, I'm doing the gimmick. I <laughs> can't be the power girl. You see that? You see that, folks? It only it, it only lasted a few seconds. So Dave's really suffering. So uh, <laughs> it, it went right out. It, I clicked it on. They said nope. <laughs> Thanks for listening, guys. Thank you very much. Uh, so we'll see everyone next week. Uh, have a wonderful day. Take care. Peace. Bye.